So we have a grid of nine boxes and we have two player, player X and player O. And at once, one of the player can take his turn and let's say if I X O and if I say X again and you can see as soon as a player matches three of its symbols, the game ends and that player wins. And this is what tic-tac-toe is all about. And honestly, this is the most asked React JS interview question that I've seen in smaller companies or even bigger companies as well. But we're not just gonna stop over here. So in more advanced interviews, interviewers ask us to manipulate the size of the board as well. So let's say if we give the prop size as four, the board uh, size of the board as four, we can see we have a board of four by four boxes now. And now to win on this board, we have to match four X's or O's together. And trust me, you won't find uh, other videos that talk about this particular approach on YouTube. So I've opened VS Code over here and let's quickly go on and initialize a new React.js app. So I'm going to say npm create wheat at latest. And now this will ask us the name of our project. I'm going to say tick tack toe, press enter. Let's choose React and JavaScript. And you can see inside of this tick tack toe folder, it has initialized this new React app. So let's switch to that folder and I'm going to run npm install to install all of our dependencies which are mentioned inside of the package.json file over here. Okay, meanwhile, this is installing. Let's remove the things that we don't need like this assets folder. I'm gonna get rid of everything inside of index.css, everything inside of app.css, and inside of app.jsx, I'm gonna get rid of all of this code, and I'll have a div, and I'll say subscribe to roadside coder, which you should if you haven't yet. Let's remove this use state and all of these imports right here. Cool. And we can see our dependencies have finished installing. So I'm going to say npm run dev and I'm going to run our app. There we go. Let's open this up. There we go. Subscribe to roadside coder. Awesome. Also, if you're interested to practice more such interview questions, I have added the link to my complete front end interview preparation course in the description down below. All right. So first of all, what we will do, we will try to build the ui of our tic-tac-toe game so instead of this inside of this div i'll have a div with class name status which will display our status as we saw a play, player x's turn player o's turn something like that so let's say player x turn and apart from this i'm gonna have a button over here which will be responsible for resetting our game okay below this i'm gonna have another div which is gonna be called board with the class name of board and this will have a class name of game our parent uh, class and inside of this board i'm gonna render my board so what i will do i'll create a state over here use state called board and the initial value for this will be let's just say const initial board equals and this will be a function which will basically return us array of nine elements right we're supposed to create nine elements so i'll fill this array with null values because we don't really need anything inside of this and simply we're gonna call this initial board function right over here and now we can take this so this board will now have so if i say console log and see this board so you can see we get this array with the nine values okay cool let's go on over here and render all of the boxes so i'll say board dot map and inside of this, since we're not going to be having anything, we're just going to be using the index. So let's just take the index and I'll return a button with the class name of cell and a key of index. And inside of this, let's just render X for now. Let's see. Yep. You can see we have nine buttons over here. Great. All right. Now let's go on and uh, add these styles for this. So for our main container, that is game container. I'll have a max width of 3 into 200 pixels. So we're going to have three boxes, right? And each of those boxes is going to be 100 pixels. So I'll just give the whole, you know, width of the game to be 3 into 100 pixels. That is 300 pixels. And I've given it like this so that we can, you know, customize it later on if we have some dynamic values in place of three. Margin zero auto so that everything in, is in the very middle. Text align center and padding to be 20 pixels. Okay. For our status message, that is this one right over here. I'm going to say font size to be 20 pixels. Display flex. Justify content to be space between so that they have some space in between. And margin bottom of 20 pixels. Just like this. For our board, I'm going to say display 
grid and for each and every column i'm going to repeat it three times with each box taking one fraction of space and justify content is going to be center so that they are on the very center you can see now for each and every cell i'm going to say width and height to be 100 pixel some font size some border some cursor pointer and some transition so that when we have added our hover class so you can see hover class just like this so that it transitions slowly and for our reset button i'm going to say padding 5 pixels top and bottom and left and right is going to be 10 pixels so yep it looks just like this you can see our hover effect is working fine as well also i realized i haven't given the class name for our reset button so now let's see yeah that looks good okay so that's our ui right there now what i want to do i want to work on the tic-tac-toe logic and for that i'm going to be following good practices and that is going to be creating a custom hook which will be containing all of the logic for this tic-tac-toe game so i'll say i'll get a new folder over here for components and inside of this i'll just uh, move my tic-tac-toe component in here so i'll say tic-tac-toe.jsx instead of app i'll call it tic Back to let's just copy it up and go back to our app.jsx and instead of instead of all of this i'll just render this tic-tac-toe over here so just like this let's get rid of that this and this let's import it over here and inside of this we don't need this and yeah i think it should be the same yeah cool now let's create a new folder for our hooks and inside this i'm going to create a new file for use tic tac toe dot jsx and now let's first of all discuss what are the things that are going to be inside of this custom hook right so first of all i don't want this state to be over here i want all of these things to be coming out from that particular custom hook because i want to keep all of my logic at one single place my winning logic who is the current player that's active my you know reset game logic and everything so let's just go on over here and create a basic skeleton for that so i'll say const use tick tack to so basically we use this use keyword over here when we are creating a custom hook and i have explained more such custom hooks a lot of such custom hooks that are asked in our front-end interviews in my in-depth front-end interview preparation course so you can check it out from link in description down below so i'm gonna simply take this state and move it over here let's import the use state and for our initial board as well i'll just take it and move it over here okay um, apart from that i'm gonna have another use state or another state which is going to be tracking if the next or if the current turn is of x or not so i'll just keep it true by default because first turn is going to be for x right now i'll create some winning patterns over here I'll create an array of this so I'll, I'll come back to this later on apart from this i'm gonna have multiple different functions let's see what are all those going to be so first of all it's going to be for calculate winner right we're gonna need a logic for that apart from that i'm gonna have a function for handle click what's gonna happen when we click on any of these boxes then another function for get status message which will tell us if it's a draw if it's access turn if it's o's turn etc and then a reset game logic right and yeah i think this is pretty much what we're going to be needing i'm gonna say return and i'm gonna send the board obviously to the user handle click logic calculate winner get status message and reset game all of these things this is we will keep this winning patterns to ourselves because that is going to be the deciding factor for the game right on who won who wins so okay let's export this so export default use tic-tac-toe and over here i'll say use tic-tac-toe i'll import it and i'll take out all of the things that we are going to be needing first of all it's going to be the board so let's see if it works the same yep looks like it great let's take out the calculate winner reset game and get status message so we have this um, reset game button right so i'll just uh, add the on click of reset uh, game over here even though this does not have anything inside of it right now but let's just add it so that when we later on add these things it's going to be working fine 
and then for over here player x is turned instead of this i'm gonna say get status message and this might result in our app breaking okay it's just not showing us any status message for now because it is empty uh, instead of x over here i'll say board of index so it will show the particular key that is inside of our board at that particular moment or instead of this we can just take over here let's say b and display it over here let's see yeah okay that's fine whenever we click on these cells something will happen right for that we have this um, where it oh, we haven't imported it so handle click function so i'll say on click i'll call handle click with the current index right and if we go inside the handle click uh, let's go over here it will take the index so that you know it knows that on which block we are currently clicking on and also when a particular block has been clicked we want to disable it so i'll say disable equals b not equals null if it's not null then i'm going to disable it simply right so right now every uh, block is enabled great let's go on and write the logic for this handle click function first so inside this handle click what i'll do i'll first check the winner if there's any winner or not right so i'll say const winner equals check or calculate winner which obviously if this function is empty I'll, i'm gonna write the logic very soon and we will supply the board to this calculate winner so let's just supply it over here let's say current board and after this i'm gonna check if there's a winner or if the current cell has something inside of it so board of index if either of this case is true then i'm not gonna do anything i'm gonna simply say return right then after that i'll copy this board in another variable so i'll say const new board equals board and what i'll do i'll say new board of index for the current index i will check what is this like first first of all we have this is x next right i'm gonna check if it's x is turned then i'm gonna add x in that particular cell so i'll say is x next if that's the case then add x else add o and then simply in the end i'm gonna set the board with this new board over here with the updated board and then set is next is going to be reverted so is x next so if it's x is turned it's gonna set o's turn now right let's go back and check if i click on it yep x amazing this is working fine if i click on it again again and again it's not gonna work because this has been disabled now because of this logic all right cool let's just uh, go on and write the logic for calculate winner but before that we need to write our winning patterns as well right so what are the winning patterns going to be let's see so we can have 0 1 2 as one pattern we can have 3 4 5 as one pattern 6 7 8 0 and 1 2 3 4 so 0 4 and 8 can be one pattern right so we have multiple different such patterns over here so let's just uh, write it just like this now this is being hard coded right now because we know that our game is only 3 by 3 right but if it was 4 by 4 or 5 by 5 then we have to dynamically calculate it which i'll show you so after that let's go on and write the logic for calculate winner now i'm gonna run a for loop through this winning patterns array so i'll say for and i'll say i equals zero and i will go from zero to winning patterns dot length and i plus plus so inside of this loop we have this winning pattern array right so i'll say winning pattern of i and i'm gonna take out one single element so let's just say const and from this area i'm gonna say a b and c so i'm taking out a for this b for this and c for this and now i'll compare if we have this current board so if the current board of a that is this position in the current board if this exists and this position in the current board is equal to this position one or b right if that's the case and same thing again but a should be equal to c as well if that's the case then obviously we have a winner right we have created a match of three so instead of this simply i'll say return current board of a return the winner if that is not the case in the end i'm gonna return null that is winner has not been calculated yet so let's go and um, you know actually i'll just uh, console log this right over here 
and see. So if I refresh this, so let's see if I say x, o, x, o, and x, we have null if I try to click again, yeah, you can see, we get the winner as x, right? Cool then. Let's just display our winner using our status message. So I'll say const, oops, const winner equals calculate winner and I'll just apply the board to this and then I'll say if we have a winner then return player and winner wins right then we have the clear winner but if board does not include any of the null value that means the game has been ended right all of them have been filled and we still don't have a winner that means it's a draw and then in the end I'm gonna return if none of this is true I'm gonna return the current turn of the player right so I'm gonna say player and if x is next then I'm gonna say x turn else o turn let's see let's refresh this and so currently it shows player x is turn if I say x see it shows player o's turn I'll say o x and I'll say o again and if I say x now you're gonna see player x wins amazing this is working flawlessly now the only thing remains is to add the logic for resetting our game so this is very simple actually i'm just gonna say set board to be the initial board which is going to set all of the boxes to null and simply in the end i'm gonna say set is next to be true so that x turn is true so if i say reset game you're gonna see player x is turned and our complete board is now empty Great. So this is how you create tic-tac-toe game for your interviews. But as I mentioned, a lot of companies do ask us another type of version where we have to pass the board size just like this. So if I say app.jsx, I'm going to have to pass the board size equals, let's say, 4. And it should display a grid of 4 by 4 over here. And user can only win by combining 4 boxes or, you know, 4 matches. So if you want to follow that tutorial, I've added this complete advanced tic-tac-toe game in my front-end interview preparation course which covers dozens of such machine coding questions along with javascript interview questions react js interview questions and even performance optimization interview questions for you senior developers out there and not just this along with this course you get an active discord community where you can ask your doubts whenever you get stuck and we will be there to help you so click the link in the description down below because right now we're having the biggest sale of the year for a very limited time so don't forget to check it out or you can also scan this qr code on your screen to go directly to the course page